what we're going to go over now is uh, what you're going to cover in lab this week. I thought it would be helpful to have a video for it. If you call from uh, two videos ago that I did, we did this little heating curve with phase changes and whatnot. And then I pointed out this heating curve that you're actually going to see in lab where it's a change in temperature versus time. And we're going to come back to this because we're going to talk about how to determine <clears throat> your phase and temperature from what you're seeing. But what you're working with is this little nickel complex. And the nickel's got all of these waters surrounding it. So we have, what do we have? We have six waters surrounding the nickel center. And this EN thing, I want to remind you, you'll keep seeing it drawn like this. It's a nitrogen, that's a nitrogen, and then this is a carbon chain. For more details on the structure, look in your, your lab book. It's not important at this time. So you're, this is what's going to be in your syringe, and you're gonna put that into your solution. And after you do that in first edition, you'd see something like this happen. Doop, it'll go up. That's the increase in temperature. And then in the end, this is the correction I made on my YouTube video online, so I want to make sure I make it here. In the end, what you've done is a molar ratio of one addition. So you've replaced, you displaced two water molecules with one EN addition. So there's my two waters. This is my one EN addition. It's because it takes up two bonds. So for every addition, I'm kicking off a couple of waters. So if you want, you can think of it as I've replaced these two waters on this first run through. On the second run through, I'm gonna start with what I ended with is over here. And so now I'd be okay, there's my first edition. Now I'm gonna add my second edition of EN and I'll see a temperature increase and then it plateaus. And when it plateaus, that's when I now have another EN added on and I've displaced another two waters and then so on and so forth. By the time I get down here and I've added the last EN, I don't have another curve, but we can make one. This would be like up and over, ignore that. And I'd have this third addition I can't do anymore because I've added an, a mole equivalent. I've filled up all of my nickel centers with EN. So once that is done, this reaction is done. That means that no matter how much more I add, I am not gonna get an increase in temperature. The reaction is complete. Now from last week, we had these values here. We were dealing with delta H with Hess's law. And yeah, I think we did bond breaking and formation. This week, we're gonna use the equation for Q is MC delta T. Q is just heat. This is a form of energy, it's heat. And what this says is that everything has some sort of specific heat. This is how hard is it to change the temperature of one gram of something by one degree C. That's all this is. These are table values that you'll find. This is the mass of the thing that we're investigating. So if this was a piece of metal that I put into water, then one part would be the mass of the metal and the specific heat of the metal, and this would be the temperature change of the metal. If I put it in water and then measured the temperature change of the water, well that change, if I have, let's flip this over, if I have metal, it's a horrible M, metal added to water, well whatever heat this loses, if this is the hot thing, I'm adding it to colder water, whatever this loses, this gains. This loses, this gains. In a closed system, where like in lab, if you do it fast enough, it is closely approximated to a closed system, that stays inside of the system. So everything this loses, this would be like a, a losing a Q, plus whatever this gains in a closed system, those two things equal zero. So there we go. When we're doing this 
in lab, you see this kind of slew of equations where we're talking about the calorimeter and then you see the solution in the cup and you're like, but then the Q reaction is the Q calorimeter. And then all of a sudden you have Qs everywhere. Let's just simplify that real quick. So the calorimeter is this whole thing. It is my styrofoam cup, my fancy lid. Here's my solution inside the cup, the little black dots. Well, that's my reaction. For the calorimeter, I'm only focused on the calorimeter. So the calorimeter is going to include the cup and the solution. So the solution, yeah, solution and the cup. So what we're saying is that we're gonna do a reaction, come back to this. I'm gonna do a reaction and my reaction is gonna give off heat and my calorimeter is going to absorb that heat. So for part of it, I am absorbing, I'm losing heat, or I'm gaining heat, I'm sorry, in the solution in the cup, and my reaction is the thing that's causing that to happen. Now the reason why the negative is on the Q-Cal side is because this is the thing that we can do the reaction or the math with. I know the mass of the solution, and just a hint, in this lab, you're gonna have, let's say, 25 mils of solution plus one mil addition of your EN. So this is like your nickel sulfate, and I have so four solution. So the change in temperature involves the total volume of solution, not just the volume of the nickel sulfate. So that's gonna give me 26 milliliters for that first addition. I think throughout this, we focus on the energy involved in the third, first edition because the values are so similar. Okay, so we know that we have this total volume. Well, where is any temperature change coming from in that total volume? What's well, coming from this reaction? So if it makes you feel any better, then one of the things, ways you can think of it is that my Q reaction is the negative, it's the one losing energy going into the Q-Cal, which is gaining energy. But because we know that these negative signs exist because of the, the con um, conservation of energy, I wrote this as a minus and a plus. The way we'd actually write this is that Q cup, or Q calorimeter, let's do that, plus Q reaction in a closed system, that equals zero. So that is where that Q calorimeter equals negative Q reaction came from. So just keep, uh, keep that in mind as you're working with your signs. So you have that piece. Now let's look at everything that goes into the calorimeter. So this is the mass of the solution. This is the total solution, total solution. So this is that one plus that one's so my 26 mils. I need the mass of it, not the volume, but the mass. But you'll notice it's handy dandy. You're given the density of the solution. You can get this right by not realizing it is one gram, but in some of the homework questions, it's not one gram per mil. So do pay attention, keep in mind, where am I getting that from as far as using volume versus mass? <clears throat> now we have this specific heat of the solution. And there, that is, looked funny upside down. There is my CP, that P means just constant pressure, which is what we're doing the, the experiment as. So the CP of the solution is this 4.18 joules per gram degree C. Mm -hmm. And if you're wondering where that comes from, look up the specific heat of water. You'll notice they're pretty darn close. Now the CP of the cup, you'll notice this isn't in a mass. This is just joules per change in temperature. So this one, we don't care about the mass of the cup. This number accounts for this kind of material being rather consistent. <clears throat> so it's not done in terms of mass, just in terms of change in temperature. This is how much it will absorb. So when we put those two things together for our calorimeter and our cup, I'm sorry, our cup and our solution, we get this handy dandy equation where this is the mass and the specific heat of the solution and the change in temperature of the solution, and then the C of the cup and the change in temperature of the cup. 
So we can put that together. I'm boring my husband, apparently. So sad. You're not, you're not supposed to agree. He's not going to change his mind. I'm very, very, very sad. Okay, I'm going to factor out my delta T. I think that's what they did. Yeah, so they went delta T. Yeah, yeah. Times mass of the solution, C of the solution, plus C of the cup. This is the same thing as this statement up here. It's just distributed because this is all multiplied by. So when you see this in your lab manual, this is just a simplified version of that. And that wraps up what you're gonna be doing this week in lab. And it's a lot of fun. The only other thing I wanna emphasize here is that remember that we can go, let's see, Q reaction divided by moles reaction. That looks an awful lot like delta H. Because delta H is an energy per reaction. So pay attention to, I don't think it's emphasized that much in this lab, but all of the moles that you're working with are in terms of moles of nickel, not in terms of moles reaction. Right, let's go back here real quick. Whoop, wrong problem. There we are. Go back here real quick. One mole of nickel is to one mole of reaction. Let me cover this up so you can see only one of the reactions. Let me say that again. This is one mole of reaction, that whole thing. So just like everything else I've been having you do molar ratios with, I can say if I want to change delta H into a true um, enthalpy of reaction, I would have delta H per mole nickel times one mole nickel per, well, there is only one mole of this nickel compound per one mole of reaction per one mole of reaction. And in the end, that puts my enthalpy value in, in terms of moles reaction. So that's an important thing to remember. And we'll, we'll deal with that a little more explicitly on Wednesday. And I will talk to you soon.